Oh, you're already here. Great. We are going to do another community talk back where we have a look at all the comments that you left under our articles and videos. But before we do that, here's a little bit of brainwashing advertisement sentences. We have a brand new newsletter. Uh, you can sign up. We send you an email every couple of months uh, with the videos and articles about animation that you need to know alongside with a recommendation for one of our older articles that you might have overlooked. So if you are like me and you sometimes forget to check back at your favorite websites, uh, this is a great reminder and promise we won't spam you, it's just every couple of weeks. Yeah, you can sign up for that on our homepage. Now let's have a look at your wonderful comments. I know you've heard me say that a couple of times, but uh, I say it again. It's always great, you know, even if you just leave a small comment that you liked or disliked something. Maybe you can give a reason. Maybe you can just, you know, speak your mind. Uh, it's always appreciated because that way we know uh, what you like, what you want to have more of, and that helps us a lot to make the uh, site better for you. So uh, thank you for all you guys that give us just a short note. It's very motivating. And of course, uh, most of the comments we now talk about are if somebody uh, gave us their opinion or even a discussion started. Of course, always a good place to discuss a lot of stuff is uh, under our news videos. The most shocking headline in this news video was obviously the uh, Disney, DreamWorks, Pixar, Lucasfilm, wage fixing cartel. If you want to know more about that, you should check out the news video. And it's great to see that people care about that issue. And let's hear what you guys are saying. Peter G uh, in his comment calls it disgusting. And I think he's absolutely right about that. Katanabe Fujitsu uh, seems to be pretty bitter about it and asks, is it possible to have a big company and not be part of a cartel these days? And uh, yeah, shockingly, it seems to be that way that the bigger a company is, the more dirt they have somewhere. One of my fellow students, Pia Autorid, commented, I think the only chance we artists have is to help each other and keep everybody informed. And I think that's an important key for us artists to approach this issue, you know, because we're not completely helpless about it. If we keep telling everybody about companies that play dirty and, you know, don't get hired there, um, these companies eventually have to change uh, how they go about those things and hopefully pay everybody uh, a more fair wage. So yeah, artists don't let companies screw you over. Another topic that was discussed uh, was the Disney Pixar st style and why everybody is using this style. You know, uh, CG films are actually pretty similar these days. Andrew Thomas uh, thinks that the, you know the outrage about uh, Elsa and Anna's character design was a little exaggerated in the beginning, and he actually thinks it's a smart move. You know that they keep sticking to the style and obviously makes the money, as he points out. Sabina K uh, said that you know this is what the people are used to. This is what the people want to see, and that's yeah, that's probably a big part of it. While everybody is jumping on that train of this style. One general thing about the news video, uh, some of you asked why we don't do more of them. <laughs> and uh, the reason is quite simple because they are a lot of work. I'm not sure if you can see that, but you know, it was like the last one I was working on a whole week full time. And I obviously can't do that all the time. There certainly is a lot of stuff going on that would be worth to talk about, but you know, in the format how I want it to be, with the detective and with, with Rolf the Frog. Uh, it's just a lot of work. So that's why you only get a long news video every couple of weeks. For now, it stays that way. But you know, good things need to be rare, so you enjoy them more. Oh yeah, another thing that I wanted to mention. Uh, we had an interview with the great guys from Cinema Fantasma, just a bunch of crazy filmmakers uh, from Mexico who uh, started making their film right after slash during their studies and uh, it became something really huge. You, you can hear more about this great stop motion project in the interview that we did. And the good news is they uh, made their Kickstarter funding. They, they made it. Um, also thanks to a recommendation I think from Giuliano del Toro 
So um, yeah, that's pretty awesome. I, I can't wait to see the final results and congratulations to the guys from Cinema Phantasma. Then we had an article named Avoiding Movie Trailers. Um, and you can see from the title what it is about, why you maybe sometimes shouldn't uh, watch a movie trailer. And Roshan is agreeing with that because the, the trailer to How to Train Your Dragons 2 uh, spoiled a uh, very important surprise for him. And I agree that that trailer gives a nice moment away. So yeah, it's weird how trailers sometimes um, show you stuff that you are uh, only about to see as a surprise. But, you know, it's like a guilty pleasure, as Deborah B and Sabina K uh, say they can't resist them. Um, Deborah B says, how can you? They're so exciting when they are released online before the film. And yeah, I have to say, I always have to hold my, myself back too. I like a point that um, Vera brought up. The best advertisement for a movie is actually the recommendation. Uh, of a friend and I think she's absolutely right and that might be a great way to avoid movie trailers you know if you send one of your friends to watch the movie and then they can tell you how the film is you know somebody you trust somebody has a similar taste and then you don't need to watch the trailer and you know that you're in for a good film or a bad film. Under the Ed Hooks interview Zippy Waller said what happened to you sitting with people in your first interview with him you sat next to him and I thought it was much more personable. Yeah, first of all, thank you. Um, you might be right about that. The, the point is, I actually don't like being in the spotlight so much, so it's actually weird that I do a YouTube channel then. Um, and you know, I, 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 I don't want to be one of those people who, you know, wants himself to be in the picture with famous people. And sometimes the situation is just so stressful, you know, at those um, conferences and festivals, you have very tight schedules, very little time to build stuff up. And I rarely have a camera guy with me. I'm just, you know, putting a camera there. And if I sit with the people, I, I cannot look through the camera. I don't know, but, but if you guys think that's okay that I sit with them and that, that it might, you know, make the atmosphere a little more relaxed, I keep that in mind and maybe try it to do that more. Then we had a long video about video settings and what you should choose in your production to have the best image quality. Often people don't know what they, uh, what they should choose or they choose it wrong because they don't know. An important thing that I didn't mention that Puck mentioned, he was asking about the H.264 codec, which in the video setting uh, video is recommended for the use of preview exports, you know, if you want to have a small handy preview to send around of your film, small file size, I recommend it to use H.264. But he pointed out that the colors are always lighter for him in H.264. And that's actually a very well-known bug uh, in the codec. And um, I've read a couple of different things about it, like, you know, some people say it's it's only a displaying issue in um, QuickTime. That QuickTime is displaying and always lighter and the actual export of the film is fine. Other people recommend, you know, changing the color before you export it. But you know, if it's a displaying issue, I'm not sure if that completely messes up your picture because then, you know, to counter uh, it, you actually made your picture darker, the real picture. So either way, the only choice you have if color is super important to you and you, you want to have uh, the precise, correct color, there is no way around image sequences. I would still use H.264, you know, if you just want to um, send a low quality version around, but you, you need to be aware that it's a low quality version and that the color might be uh, washed out. Under the same video, there's a great tip from Conde Pablo. Namely for those of you who work with uncompressed pictures, uh, you can get them a lot smaller if you zip them or if you put them in a, in a WinRAR. Um, and yeah, that's true because you know, uncompressed things are the best ones to uh, compress with WinRAR or 7-zip or you know, even with Windows, uh, you can make it a lot smaller. Yeah, so that's a great tip to uh, archive your uncompressed image sequences. Put them in a zip file, they get much smaller. 
Now the next topic, JK actually wants to do a uh, follow-up about this. I just have to mention it in this uh, talkback because it's one of our most commented articles of all time, I mean, excluding the giveaways. We asked an admittedly very provocative question, namely, is anime a legitimate form of animation? I have to stress that we certainly, we did not do that because we wanted to bash anime, that was not our intention. We just knew that, you know, in art school, for example, and any art communities, you have those people that <laughs> to totally love anime, and you have the people that completely despise it and never watch one, don't want to have anything to do with it. Uh, and we wanted to uh, bring those two groups together for a discussion. And it's actually surprising how polite and uh, fair you all were about this. Even if we had both extremes, it was always very nice. So, internet, you give me hope. We, we had the people that said, you know, it's, it's the illusion of life. It is animation, it's definitely animation. Then we had the people that said, mm, it's bad animation because it's, it's so reduced. Uh, but then, of course, other people pointed out that, you know, that's not true for all anime and that there is lazy Western animation and lazy anime animation. And I liked how Alexis pointed out that, you know, in the end of the day, it's a story that makes animation good or bad. But it's also interesting, we had a professor stepping out who actually said that he um, bans anime styles from his classroom. I must say I can, I can get his point because, you know, a person who just copies the anime style and just copies it you know doesn't learn from it doesn't learn anatomy um, might be able to do pretty good uh, anime drawings but it's pretty much lost if he has to do anything else so I kind of understand that point I mean I don't know if it's the right way to ban it completely maybe you just have to keep an eye on those people to make sure that they also learn all the other stuff that there is to know about animation but um, yeah, I think it's a legitimate point and you you guys already <laughs> gave a lot of feedback to him and, and food for thoughts. Thanks for all the people who stayed polite and uh, kept this a fair discussion. Um, it's it's really important to talk about controversial stuff like this, you know, and it doesn't it doesn't do any good to not talk about it. Now, and there we already are at the end of this talkback. Once again, uh, if you don't want to miss anything, subscribe to the newsletter, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm gonna leave you with a magic trick because I have been obsessed with that recently.